Senator Rand Paul, a doctor, and Governor Chris Christie spoke out in recent days, both in support of vaccinations and also the role parents should play in the decision-making process, given fears about potential side effects. Those comments prompted ridicule from some like liberal comedian and former talk show host Joy Behar, who today cited what she called Neanderthal thinking on the right as, quote, scary and dangerous. Climate change deniers, vaccination deniers, I mean, they're going to kill us. Yeah, all right. When, when, when the news starts using Dr. Uh, Joy Behar quotes and bites, I think we're all in trouble. All right, joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is our friend Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, America's psychologist. You see him on CNN and NBC's Today Show. We're honored to have him as always. Hello, doctor. It's always a pleasure, Steve. Thank you for having me. All right, before we get to the vaccinations and, uh, and a little bit about uh, Bobby Christina Brown, I want to ask you about the, um, the video, uh, uh, which I didn't see and uh, most places haven't run it. Uh, I think uh, maybe Fox ran a little bit of it to give the people a flavor of what that uh, pilot went through, the uh, Jordanian pilot burned alive by ISIS. Um, should we show that so people understand the, the horror uh, that that man went through and then they, therefore, by extension, they understand what kind of animals would do that? Uh, I don't think we should show it because that's exactly what they want. They want us to show it. They want us to... Uh, be uh, instilled with fear from it, and I don't think we should cooperate uh, with the uh, enemy in uh, any possible way. We have enough news outlets like Fox and others who are telling us what happened, who may give us a little inkling as to the extreme horrific suffering of the individual who was burned alive. I, I think we do understand the threat of ISIS and the fact that what they're doing is absolutely beyond anything that we've seen before with regard to lack of humanity. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, the objections to showing the people jumping out of the World Trade Center. Uh, I think that everybody should have been made to see that uh, all the way to the bodies hitting the ground because it was too clean. There were no bodies carried out. People know people died, but they don't understand they had to choose between being, uh, you know, evaporating to death or jumping. And uh, I, I was always in favor of showing that, but uh, that's just me. Well, I hear you, Steve, but I think it's also dishonorable to the people who have died that their lives, uh, to end in such a horrific fashion, uh, would be shared with the public. I think this is something that if the family, uh, friends, and those close to the individual, as well as those in positions of power in politics would want to see it, I think it's enough for them to see it, and then we could then understand from these individuals how horrific this is. All right, let's talk about the vaccinations. And, and I think we're getting a little um, conflated here with, um, uh, you know, if we're talking about all vaccinations, if we're talking about the basic vaccinations, or if we're talking about the, uh, the HPV virus, uh, you know, which they want to give my 15-year-old son so that some woman, when she's 60, won't get cervical cancer, um, you know, uh, or, or uh, chicken pox. I think, I, 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 what, what's your take on, on uh, immunization and a parent's right to say, I don't want to put that stuff in my kid? Uh, I, I do believe it is a parent's right to determine uh, what the vaccination process should be for their child. But I would also ask parents to be cognizant that it's not just about the health of their child, but the health of other children. So parents really do have to have a more global view. I would like to see a world where parents would say, okay, I have some issues with vaccination, but I have to look at the greater good of humanity and not just my own particular child, God forbid, developing something, for example, like autism uh, from the MMR vaccine. All right, but if you don't get, but here's the thing, if your child's vaccinated and they're in school, they're protected. So if a kid comes in who's not vaccinated and gets measles, your kid's not going to get it. So why force the other kid to get it if the parent doesn't want to give it to him? Because even children who are vac the, the the vaccines are not 100 percent. So even children who have been vaccinated or others who have been vaccinated might still be able to uh, catch measles, for example. And we have to think of, God forbid, pregnant women, for example, who may be riding a subway who have not been vaccinated. That child gets on. There was a situation uh, of a, a college student who actually was uh, exposed a whole subway car of people possibly to measles. So you have to think about the greater good. All right, very briefly, uh, Bobby, uh, Christina, uh, Brown, um, predictable? 
very predictable, very, very sad. I believe this is a young woman who may end up dying of a broken heart. Uh, she has over-identified with a mother. She has complicated grief. She's had a lot of drama in her life. She had two parents who are, you know, personally, probably, I know, great people, but have had their own issues. Right, right. So all of this is a cascading uh, event on this child who has had a lot of emotional instability in her life. Doctor, Best. always great to speak to you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank all you. All right. Uh, up next, folks, senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, Elliot Abrams. Don't go away.